Yeah. So in the previous session, you would have understood how do we go about calibrating the ESP32 device and make it generate data which is corrected based on its offsets on the serial port. In essence, what we have understood so far is that uh, the sensor device needs to be calibrated first uh, so that all the uh, initial offsets are deducted and taken away from the actual data and uh, using the Arduino IDE, we need to load a program onto the device which will make that program, which will make that device generate data based on the gesture that we are doing and that data is going to be taken and given to the edge impulse for creating the uh, model. So, uh, let me put this in perspective. So, we have the device over here that is the ESP32 device. What is it doing? Now, it has the using the I2C communication, it has the IMU6050 which is getting all the readings and uh, currently the readings are being read by the ESP32 and uh, they are being sent on the serial port. Uh, this has been just shown to you by the earlier speaker, how to get data and uh, how to send it on the serial port. So, you can imagine that the ESP32 is transmitting data on the serial port already. Now, on the other hand, we have the edge impulse software running on a website, on the edge impulse website, uh, which is responsible for receiving the data and building the model uh, for various gestures. Now, I am going to talk about how this is going to be made to happen and uh, uh, then we are going to describe this process and show it in front of you. So, uh, again putting in perspective, model is being built on the edge impulse side, data is being read on the ESP32 side. We need an agent in between called as the data forwarder, which is going to receive the data on the serial port from here and using, so on this side it is going to do serial port communication, on this side it is going to do web socket communication. Now, the data forwarder is a very smart guy who reads data from the device, he runs on any machine, he can run on a laptop, uh, on the same machine on which you are seeing the edge impulse. Uh, so, this can run on laptop or a PC, your laptop or your PC, you can run the data forwarder program whose job is to receive data from the serial port and basically transmit data to the edge impulse uh, to a particular project in edge impulse. So, that uh, the edge impulse will get this data and also will indicate to the edge impulse that this data is meant for which gesture. So, once the edge impulse knows that this collection of data is for a particular uh, label or a particular gesture, uh, it can use that data for training. So, it uses an uh, ANN and uh, uh, artificial neural network for training, we will uh, come to that uh, one by one, we will go there step by step. Let us talk a little bit more about how the data forwarder works and what is its action. So, uh, the way the data forwarder is going to work is like this, to get its complete perspective, let me describe what happens, then I will show you the screens how to make this happen. So, on the edge impulse side, we will have to create a project. Uh, of course, to create a project, you will need your credentials, your username and password. So, the project will be created. Now, why is the project, what is the role of the project? The project has uh, the, uh, you can think of it acts as the repository of the models. The models I am going to build for my gesture recognition are going to be built under a project. So, I have to create a project for gesture recognition, I can call it whatever I want. So, let us say there is a project called gesture recognition, which is uh, available on the edge impulse site. So, this is the project. 
Finally, whatever data I am going to get here have to go to this project, of course, labeled with different labels. So, I will now go to edge impulse and say, look, this is a project I want to do and uh, then I will say uh, uh, under that project, uh, I will say that I want to create various gestures and all that. So, in the project, I will say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, what gesture you want and you will have to get the data for that gesture. Now, that is what has to happen at the edge impulse side. The ESP32 side is very simple, it is just going to pump serial data. So, what should the data forwarder do or uh, what does it do? So, it talks to the serial port because it is always getting data from there. It identifies uh, that there is data. So, in the present instance where we are reading data related to the uh, accelerometer, uh, it will say I am able to see three pieces of data coming with every sample, uh, with every reading. So, it says I will ident I, am, I have identified three pieces of data, but it does not know what to do with that data. It is just receiving that data. The data forwarder knows that it is getting the data, but it does not know what to do with that data. So, first time it will ask you what should I call these three pieces of data. In this case, three pieces of data are being transmitted by the program which we just saw. So, it identifies that yeah, this data is A x, A y, A z, acceleration on the x side, x axis, acceleration on the y axis and acceleration on the z axis, which is enough for me to recognize a gesture without getting into the gyroscope reading. So, it says ok. So, I have given this names to these readings ok. Now, after that what needs to happen ok. After that it has to send the data to the edge impulse, but before that before the edge impulse can receive this data it has to identify this data is coming under which gesture because see you are training for a particular gesture and uh, for it to start receiving this data it says do not just send me the data send me under which gesture this data should be classified. So, that I can create my own sample against that data and use it for training. Anybody who knows how training works knows that first you need to record a data which is labeled and, and then use that for training. So, we need to do that. So, on the project side on the gesture recognition project side on the edge impulse side the edge impulse software side what do I need to do? I need to identify uh, the gesture, I need to identify the gesture for which I will soon start sending the data. Actually, data forwarder is receiving the data, it is not just forwarding it because it has not got any uh, command from the edge impulse side to start sending the data. So, it has identified the gesture, uh, uh, sorry, I am giving the name to that gesture under which this data is going to come, and then I have to tell the edge impulse, ok. Now, you start receiving the data uh, which is coming from this particular device uh, into, uh, into the edge impulse repositories. So, which can then be used for training. So, I identified the gesture, then I should also say uh, get sampling or start sampling. I think I should say start sampling and once I say start sampling, that start sampling is nothing but a signal given by the edge impulse side to the data forwarder telling hey data forwarder now send me the data you are receiving it. I will take this data and I will say this data is used for the gesture whose label you have already given me. So, that is how this, this story works. So, that is in simple terms the description of the movement of data from the ESP32 towards the edge impulse and it being used as a training data. Now, this is super important because if you do not do that, we will create a whole bunch of data on the device side, but we will not know that this data is under which label. There is still a bit of processing required on the uh, edge impulse side because we cannot take this raw data as it is, we will have to do a little bit of processing. We have also not created the model and all that, we will see how to do that, but this in essence is called the data forwarding process. So, you can imagine that the role of data forwarding is very important 
because it is the go between, it is the broker between the device which is collecting the data, which is creating the data and the edge impulse which is responsible for building the model based on that data. Tomorrow, uh, the data forwarder will still play a role for many different projects done on this platform because let us say I am recording voice and this has to be trained or some recognition has to be done. That will happen on the edge impulse side, but the data has to be sent from here to there. Next, some images may have to be sent. The ESP32 is capable of retrieving the images, create, uh, taking the images, but these images belong to which people? That we have to do at the edge impulse side. We have to label these images, then only the images make sense. So, uh, this data forwarder is taking data from one side and remember the connection protocol also here is a serial port connection. Uh, which is our classic UART based communication, very slow in fact. Whereas here the communication is over the internet, uh, over IP, okay. So that is another communication. So, uh, you know, it is very Im important for this data forwarder to exist because it, uh, in many ways it is the essence of moving from the edge to a platform where the data can be created. And then how do you bring this thing back uh, as a model after it is trained and put it on the device? This is basically first the device collection phase. So, given that background, we will soon show you uh, the screens and the working of the data forwarder. So, we will come to that. Okay. We are showing the working of the data forwarder now. Uh, the precursor to this is the device is already connected to our laptop and our laptop is also connected to the internet part 1, step 1. Step 2 is already a project has been created on the edge impulse side called gesture recognition, the project is already there. So, given that the project is there which is going to receive data and given that uh, the device th is there which is going to pump the data, we are set the stage for the forwarding of the data. So, how do we start forwarding? Let us try and understand the process of forwarding. So, we will start the, the this is a program which is a command line program given by the edge impulse people called edge impulse data forwarder. Now, when you are doing projects of this kind uh, and you need a similar situation where you have an IoT device and you have a, a place where the model is going to be built, uh, maybe our DGX or whatever. Uh, so, if that is going to happen, you will have to write a data forwarder of your own choice uh, and create that data forwarder for receiving data from whichever device you are uh, proposing and sending it to the uh, 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 place where the model is going to be built. Uh, so, in our case, the model is being built on the Edge Impulse website we are sending it the data there over the internet and the data, the training data is being received from the device. Uh, so, first we run the edge impulse data forwarder in a clean mode so that the all the existing repositories are not there. Now, uh, the, edge, uh, the data forwarder is running, but uh, its first job is to connect to the project on the uh, edge impulse side. In order to connect to the project and identify the project, it needs credentials to be given, which is the same credentials you used while going to the website of uh, Edge Impulse. You have to give the same credentials, which is a username and a password. So, we have entered the username and we are now entering the password. This will establish the connection between data forwarder and the Edge Impulse side. Okay. So, uh, looks like the connection has gone through and now you see there are some very interesting messages which you can see here. So, it has connected to that website to that account. So, you can say that the data forwarder has logged in into an account on the edge impulse side. On the uh, device side, it has connected over the COM4 port which is a port of the uh, laptop. So, the serial port is connected. Uh, and uh, 
this is the id it has given so you can see it very clearly from these commands that ser is the device side uh, ws which stands for web socket is connected to the uh, remote management edge impulse.com via the uh, uh, web socket protocol right this is the wss which is the web uh, server socket protocol which is running there so uh, we are connected on that side to edge impulse edge impulse is ready and waiting for data and uh, we are connected on this side to the uh, device which is going to supply the data uh, then it has because we have gone to the account we have not yet gone to the actual project where the data will be accumulated we are saying uh, it is asking the uh, data forwarder is asking you want to take this data and bring it to which device so it is saying to which project do you want to connect this device so it is showing what are the projects already created so in an earlier session we had seen how to create a project it's a matter of just 5 minutes to create a project under edge impulse so we already have a project called gesture recognition which has been created under this account on the edge impulse side of the story uh, so we have chosen we have decided to choose this project it is just showing us the list of projects under that account so we are choosing that project so now uh, moment we chose that project it uh, obviously uh, will connect to that project and let's see what it is doing now now it has started reading the data very smartly and uh, started uh, processing the data to a certain extent so you can see what it is doing so it is detecting the data frequency on the device side ser are all the things to do with the device side it has also detected the data frequency on this side of the story and uh, it has uh, picked up the fact that the data seems to be getting transmitted because this program which is running on the uh, device which we put in using the arduino the program is continuously running so it supplied some uh, initial coordinates now it's asking because there we need to call this data with some name when it goes to edge impulse it can't be an unnamed data if you have to create a row of data we have to have names to the columns so it's asking what should i name the columns with so we are going to name this as the acceleration in the x direction because that's all our uh, imu uh, can locate can uh, record so we have these three accelerations ax ay and az so he has given the names of the accesses there and uh, we just supply the accesses and so we are given names to the data okay uh, now uh, so this side is uh, done so device esp32 is now connected to the project uh, gesture recognition and now we have to start building a machine mode. it is saying go to the edge impulse site uh, uh, onto this url and uh, start building your model so in order to build the model we have to start receiving the data see right now no data has gone from the data forwarder to the edge impulse site now that edge impulse site has to start signaling uh, has to signal the uh, data forwarder now whatever data you are getting from the device give it to me under this label of gesture so we need to do that so we will now show you what we need to do at the uh, edge impulse side to get this data so let's leave this screen for a moment and let's transition to the student 0101 uh, gesture recognition and uh, uh, aram se so we'll go to the so i am now showing you uh, data forwarder is ready device is ready now the edge impulse side the project has to get ready to capture this gesture or capture this data which is not yet ready so that the data can flow so now we activate the go to the data acquisition side of the uh, uh, edge impulse side device we have already identified esp32 s3 now this gesture this data which we it's going to get uh, all this data like any basic machine learning data without a label is no use from a training perspective so we we are going to get the data but this data is under which gesture all this data together identifies which gesture so i do a gesture and i identify this data so it has to be labeled 
So, the label we are going to use is left, right. So, left that is we are going to signal the left letter and it is going to recognize the left letter, but we are going to train it to do that. So, let us just pause a little bit for here. So, uh, left is the name that we are going to go to our gesture movements. Uh, sensor, we have a sensor which is axis we just named which are A x, A y and A z. Uh, the frequency also came from the sample side that is from the device side that the frequency is 50 hertz. Sample length we have to determine what is a, how long does it take for us to make a gesture. It may take 3 seconds, it may take 2 seconds, we are setting it to 2 seconds, right? 3 seconds. So, we have set the, so in 3 seconds we have to do a gesture that means several movements we have to do in 3 seconds. Uh, I mean we do this, it will take 3 seconds to do this and once it does that, it takes that label and says all these movements, all these various acceleration readings have to be put under one gesture called L, left gesture. So, we will now say start sampling uh, here and then we will go back to the data forwarding side for a moment just to see what is happening. So, we say start sampling and so it has started. Now, let us go to the data forwarding side. Uh, so, we are on the data forwarder. So, you see something has happened here. The moment we said start sampling over there on the edge impulse side, we got an incoming sampling request to the data forwarder saying the label under which you are sending the data is left, uh, the length is 3000 the interval is 20 and uh, there are some keys and the sensor is this. So, waiting for data, now it has just sampled some data uh, which is uh, not there. Uh, so, now we will make the gesture, correct. So, again we will have to say sampling, no? Because we, we did not sample anything. So, this is one sample, it is actually not a gesture. Uh, this is a gesture, this is not a left gesture. Now, we will do the left gesture. So, we will remove this because this is not indicative of the data. So, now we will do the left sample the moment he says start sampling we will do the gesture. So, now focus the camera on him he is doing the gesture uh, and it got uploaded. So, now this is a real left gesture see the uh, accelerations these are the values of A x, A y and A z, how they changed when the gesture was made, it has recorded that. So, uh, we will do it one more time just to show you, we will do one more sample, start sampling. Now, he is doing the gesture, you can see the gesture being done and we have the second sample. So, we have now two samples, one and two. So, uh, if you want to see the second sample, uh, from its data perspective graph, uh, you can see that. I think we just have to click on that, right? This is the second sample. Achha, this is the second sample. Oh, okay. This is the second sample itself. So, this is the uh, sample which we got again for the letter L. So, like that, you keep on recording the samples. So, that is the data. Uh, I mean, obviously, there are a bunch of AX, AY, AZ readings, and also we know that this all data is about the left gesture. Similarly, we can label a right gesture record data, uh, some other gesture record data. So, that is how the uh, program will proceed. So, right now we have shown you how to collect the data from the device and create the training data. Okay? We just created the training data, this is raw training data. Now, we will start talking to you about how does the model get created on the uh, device side uh, on the edge impulse side uh, and how do you build the model with this data and of course, you will have to record ma many samples. For example, for just the left gesture you will have to record about 25 to 30 samples. For the right gesture you will have to record about 25 to 30 samples. So, I, I, I am sure you will get bored seeing us record L and record samples, uh, R and record samples. Uh, so, we will assume that you can do it on your own uh, for either this left and right gesture or for some other gesture, uh, you will be able to do that. Uh, and then there is 
uh, whole issue of training. So, let us pause here and then I will show you training.